Hello, this is a new video on Philip K. Dick's Do Android Stream of Electric Sheep. The first video focused on the concept of philosophical zombies. This one is centered around the theory of illusionism. This video will not go through the plot in details and try to focus on the story elements that gear towards illusionism in philosophy of mind. A quick recap of the plot. It's the future, and the production and manufacturing of robots, androids, has bloomed. There are androids everywhere, and they do all sorts of things that workers, maids, workforce, entertainers, there's one slight problem that has arisen with this situation. Some androids don't like to keep doing what they were created to do. They escape and start to live outside the profiles they were assigned. Most of those rogue androids flee to planet Earth. Humans have colonized Mars, and Earth is a desolate place. It's populated by underachieving humans who couldn't afford to migrate to space. Earth is also the destination of most of those androids who revolt against their initial purpose and want to live freely. It's understandable that they choose to go to Earth. Things are chaotic in Earth. This situation of those escapees has created the line of work of detectives. They're humans who track the rogue androids and kill them or retire them. This is the job of the novel's protagonist, Rick Deckard. The community of humans goes to extreme lengths to cling to the idea that humans are fundamentally different from androids. And it's not that easy of a task. In appearance, the androids are indifferentiable from humans. You crack open an android and there's blood, bones and guts. The technological prowess that allows the manufacturing of human-like androids, plus the fact that those androids, or some of them, are not bound by what purposes their makers assign to them, pose a serious problem. Androids are humans. What do humans have that androids don't? Here come religion, the possession of commodities and a dominant narrative pushed by the media. All these three powers create and maintain the belief that there is a primordial difference between the human and the android. Deckard's journey throughout the novel gradually challenges and demolishes all those three forces, leaving him and us the readers with the realization that androids are humans. There are no differences. Everything humans do, androids do. Everything humans need, androids need. This is epitomized by the final scene in the novel, when Deckard is happy because he thinks he's found a toad in the desert, a real toad, not a robot. He takes it home, Deckard's wife closely examines it and finds out it's a robotic toad. Then what she does is call the vet's office to order some insects for the toad to feed on. The concepts of feeding, veterinarian, insects, belong to how we think of living subjects. The fact that Iran naturally uses this vocabulary shows that Iran already thinks of androids as living creatures, even if she's not aware that she does. The novel, with its main plot and its subplot, serves to destroy the dominant narrative. We learn that everything Deckard has been led to believe, which is what sets humans apart from androids, is not real. The implications that follow from that are vast. If there is no difference between humans and androids, then either first humans are androids, okay, two, or second, humans have gone extinct and were replaced by androids, and the androids created the distinction human android to stratify society and for one group to oppress another based on the human versus android dichotomy. It's similar to how humans utilize race to do the same thing. This parallel is well used through the Voigtkampf test, which is named after Adolf Hitler's book. Nazis generally believed that they were different from and superior to other humans. Third, there is no difference between humans and androids because what we call consciousness is just an illusion, which in philosophy of mind is a theory called illusionism. The theory was put forward by Keith Frankish and it's the idea that consciousness is an illusion. Now in philosophy of mind, consciousness is the biggest unknown. We have senses and abilities, but there is a mind or a consciousness that experiences the experiences we have from a first person perspective. This consciousness is bizarre because we don't know how it comes to be, where it is located, what happens to it after death, or when exactly we start having it. All this unavailable information makes consciousness the hard problem it is. Illusionism postulates that our experiences do not have a phenomenal property. There is no distinct you that lives the experiences of, say, tasting chocolate uniquely. All we have are our senses and the capacity to introspect about the data that our senses transmit to us. But that our introspection about that data is misreported and erroneous. It is 
This faulty introspection about the information we access through our senses that creates the illusion that we have consciousness. Illusionism holds mental states to be physical states. For example, being betrayed is a negative feeling that everybody experiences if betrayed. But we do feel as if there is a phenomenal experience that is unique to us when we experience betrayal and that it differs from how other people experience it. This is only the work of a faulty introspection about the data. Religion is a very persuasive force when what you want is to shape and to later maintain a narrative. The popular religion in the novel is mercerism, and by the end of the novel it is revealed that mercerism is fake, but prior to its exposure, mercerism comforts people's beliefs that they are superior to androids. Mercerism focuses on humans' empathy as opposed to androids' apathy. This is the dominant doctrine. Everybody believes that humans are empathetic, while androids are not. Deckard, like everybody else, believes that too, but during his journey to Earth, he realizes that it is not true. The test that detects whether one is empathetic or not is not reliable at all. He realizes that anybody, android or human, could pass or fail the test due to various reasons, like the person's history, upbringing, or anything. There are many humans who are just not empathetic. The idea that androids are incapable of experiencing emotions proves it to be wrong too. This is proven on multiple occasions. Rachel Rosen is the first character who bores some holes in Deckard's beliefs about how androids are different from humans. She's not what an android is supposed to be. Later in the novel, she would act out of spite and emotion. She's a heroine who helps runaway androids stay in hiding and avoid being retired. Towards the end of the novel, Rachel goes to Rick's home and kills his goat. This is an act done out of spite. Androids aren't supposed to feel spite. Rachel and Rick have sex. She likes him, but to him it's nothing more than a fling. Disgruntled, Rachel goes to Rick's home and kills his goat. That's not very robotic. One of the strongest encounters that would shake Deckard's conviction and her understanding of the word of the novel is when Deckard meets the opera singer Lugeluft. The first thing surprising about her is the kind of job she does. She's an opera singer. It's an artistic job. It requires using emotions to portray characters. Deckard meets her when she's preparing to play Pamina from Mozart's The Holerash, The Magic Flute. Acting, portraying characters, Characters is not a function we'd normally associate with robots. Not only is Lubeluft a lot like a human, but she's a refined human. She's an actress singer, she enjoys going to museums. She's the hardest android Deckard has ever had to retire. This time, retiring looks a lot like killing. Lube is indistinguishable from a human. Then there is somebody who is human, but who appears to lack genuine empathy, and that is Phil Resch. He's the other bounty hunter that Deckard meets at the police station and who helps Deckard ooh to the police station and helps him also retire Lubeluft. Deckard notices how Resch doesn't manifest any emotions upon killing or retiring his colleague at the police station when it turns out the colleague is an android, and the way Resch disposes of Lubeluft is also devoid of any emotions. He remains all the time imperturbable. According to what's believed to be the difference between humans and androids, Resch qualifies a lot more like an android than Luba does or Rachel. There are several encounters that reveal the difference between humans and androids is not clear. Consciousness and the ability to experience mental states is something that even the said androids have. Keith Frankish's illusionism backs this up. It's an interesting take on the hard problem of consciousness by saying that it is nothing but an illusion. All we have are abilities, capacities, our senses, our memories, and consciousness results from the confusion that arises from accessing all the data we receive. Androids or robots, if equipped with as many abilities, will develop the same illusion and have consciousness too. This explains why the androids are indistinguishable from humans to the point that maybe all there are are androids. And this would beg the question, if we're all androids of sorts, who made us? Now this video has reached its end. Until we meet again, have a great day.